This is Mr. Anderson from Kellogg Community College, and we're going to be looking at Chapter 2, Section 6, the Algebra of Functions. This is a situation where we're going to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. It's really nice to see some examples first, and then it's easy to see how you can put them together using all four basic functions, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. We are not going to do composites of functions yet, where the function is inside the other function in this chapter. So we're going to start off by taking f of x and g of x and add them together with the value of 4 for the x value. So what we have to do is take f of x and g of x and add them together. So as we learned in a previous section, f of 4 is taking that number and plugging it in for the variable x. I'll use parentheses for my 4 and compute the function. 4 squared is 16, 16 minus 4 is 12. So f of 4 is 12. Then we're going to plug that into my g. So I'm going to take my g equation. I'm going to plug my 4 in here. So my g of 4 is going to be, in parentheses, 4 plus 2. So my g of 4 is... 6. So, to get to answer the question f plus g of 4 is to take our 12 plus 6 and add those together. So my f plus g of 4 is 12 plus 6, which is 18. Now, if we were to do this problem using just the letter x, let me show you what that would look like. So my f of x is x squared minus x, and my g of x is x plus 2. That would be taking this and this and adding it together. Just as I added 12 plus 6 to get 18, I can take this f of x and this g of x and add them together, like so. In doing so, you'll notice that to collect like terms, this x and this x will simplify to 0. So x squared plus 2 is my answer. You'll notice too that if I actually took my 4 from this problem and went 4 squared plus 2, that would give me 18. Let's do subtraction. Subtraction is done the same way as addition. It's just, well, whoops, scroll past there a little bit. It's just that we're going to subtract the two numbers instead of add them. So, let me get my pen set up here. Okay, so we're going to take our equation f and equation g, subtract the two with the number of negative 1. Going back to the top, I can see that my f of x if I plug in my negative 1, I'm going to use my negative 1 for every value of x. So this becomes, in parentheses, negative 1 squared minus negative 1. And by computing that out, I'm going to get 1 plus 1, because I can take the subtraction of a negative, which is like adding a positive. So my f of negative 1, whoops, didn't show up there, f of negative 1 is 2. Now I've got to compute my g value here with my negative 1, and then we'll subtract. So change in color, let's have my g of negative 1 using my above equation, and in my above equation it was x plus 2, so this is going to be negative 1 plus 2. And I put this together, and my g of negative 1 is equal to positive 1. So now, to get my composite of these two functions, I'm going to subtract these two. So my f, my subtraction of the two functions, with negative 1 being plugged in for my x, 2 minus 1, which is 1. So in, to repeat, you're going to take the number, plug it into your function, and either 
add or subtract based on the operation. Now what I'm going to show you is that if I was to do this with just the variables, so I took my f of x, which is x squared minus x, and I took my g of x, which is x minus 2, and subtracted them, it would look like this. x squared minus x minus this whole thing, x minus 2. Now, what's important about this, when you subtract a quantity, you have to distribute the negative to each of these inside. So this becomes x squared minus x, and this becomes a minus x, and the negative of a negative is a positive. So by distributing this negative 1, so this becomes negative and this becomes positive, we now have this expression, x squared minus 2x plus 2. Now you'll notice if I plug negative 1 into this equation, I will get an answer of 1 over here, because negative 1 squared is positive 1, minus 2, plus 2, which simplify to 0, 1 would be my answer. But this would be the algebraic representation of it, which um, would be these two functions subtracted. The third example is going to be to multiply these two functions together. So just like we did before, we are going to take my f and my g, plug in the number 4, and then after we plug in the number 4, we are going to multiply these together. So I'm going to go f of 4 is equal to, and in parentheses again, oh, sorry, this is a negative 4, which is important, negative 4 squared minus negative 4, and that gives me 16, and then if I go swipe, swipe here, 16 plus 4, so this gives me an answer of 20. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my g of negative 4 and plug that into my equation. And since my equation was x plus 2, I'm going to go negative 4 plus 2. And so my g of negative 4 is going to be negative 4 plus 2, which is negative 2. So therefore, my f times g of negative 4 will be 20 times negative 2. So my answer is negative 40. Okay, for this example here, we are going to take a look at the expressions, but in this case we're not going we're just going to use the variables x. So we're going to take my f of x, which was x squared minus x, and we're going to take my g of x, which is x minus 2, or x plus 2, excuse me, and we're going to show you what that's going to be. So if I take my f times g of x, it's going to be multiplying these two together. x squared minus x, parentheses, and then x plus 2. Now what this creates, it creates a FOIL problem, where the first branch goes from here to here to make x cubed. The second branch goes from here to here to make 2x. The third branch goes from here, or 2x squared, excuse me. The third branch goes from here to here to make negative x squared. And the fourth branch goes from here to here to make negative 2x. Now we can simplify these middle terms, so I've got x cubed plus 1x squared, because 2 minus 1 is 1, minus 2x. Now that means if I plug my number negative 4 into this problem, I should get, I should get a negative 40. Negative 4 to the third power is negative 64. Negative 64, let me write that down just to keep track here. I'm just going to check my work here. And then negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. And then 2 times negative 4, that is going to be a positive 8. Well, negative 64 
plus 16 plus 8 will give you an answer of negative 64 plus 24, which is negative 40. So I've just checked my work. You may not have to do anything as difficult as what I just did in the previous problem up above, but it is kind of a nice review to take a look at a FOIL problem from before. All right, moving on to the next problem. Let's do division. Now, the one part about division that you have to be careful of is that the denominator cannot be equal to zero. If the denominator is equal to zero, then you have the division of zero error. So, let's go with this problem. f of g divided by 4. Now, or f of g substituting the number 4. So what I'm going to do is take my f of 4, which is taking my 4, plugging it in, squared, and then minus my 4 there. And we did this before up above. This is going to be 16 minus 4, which is 12. And then I'm going to take my g, 4, which is going to be my x, I'm just making sure, plus 2. And so my g of 4 is equal to 6. My f of 4 is equal to 12. So therefore, f divided by g of 4 is equal to 12 divided by 6, which is 2. Now, if I just used my values of x, because I'd have my f of x is equal to x squared minus x, and my g of x is equal to x plus 2, the equation would look like this f divided by g of x is equal to x squared minus x all over x plus 2. Therefore, if I plug my numbers in, you'd see I'd get 12 on the top and 6 on the bottom and give me 2. But here's the thing. Do you notice that it says provided that g of x is not equal to 0? You notice that. Well, take a look at this. Is there a number I could plug into my denominator that would give me a 0? And there is that number would be negative 2, which means that I must check anytime I have a problem where there's an x in the denominator, usually in the division part, I have to check to see if there's a number that would give me a number equal to 0. So by setting the denominator equal to 0, I can subtract 2 from both sides, and that would give me my exclusionary value or my danger number. So yes, my answer is in this case 2, but for the general equation I can never have an answer where x is negative 2. If I plug negative 2 into the equation I would get a division of 0 error. Therefore, the domain of this function, which we're going to do later on in this section, the domain of this function is x such that x can be real but x cannot be equal to negative 2, which we're going to see in, whoops, that is not the way we write that. There we go. Sorry about that parenthesis there. This is the way we're going to look at some domain problems on the second page here. All right, let's take a look here. On to the second page. Domain testing. The domain testing. There are no problems with domain. Now, remember, let's, let's, uh, Let's take a look here. Domain is when we have x values that go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So domain is all about checking between negative infinity on the x and positive infinity on the x as well. There are usually no problems when you have, you know, um, something like 5x plus 3, or there's no problems if you have 2x plus 4 over 2 3, no problems if you have an x squared plus 7, there's no problems if you have like a, an x cubed or if this is a different power, but you do have problems when you have 1 over anything with an x in the denominator. Anything with 1 over x, if you see a number in the top, and you can see I can change these numbers, anytime you have numbers in the top, and then you have a x in the bottom anywhere, like 7 minus x, now you have a problem. Because what will happen is I can 
make a value. I can make a value where a number in the denominator is going to cause problems because you get the division of zero error. Like here, the danger number would be negative 2 because negative 2 and 2 make 0. Here, the danger number would be 4 or 0 because that number divided by 0 for 4 divided by 0 is undefined. And can you guess what the danger number is here? It's 7. So, we'll take a look at some problems here and determine the domain of the sum difference in product. Now, what's good about this is you just have to check in these three equations to see if any of these problems have a x in the denominator. Now, you'll notice that these two expressions have no problems. There's no x's in the denominator. So, the domain of this and this are both real. So, the domain is real because there were no danger numbers in the denominator. Now here, now let me, I think, write this as if we were doing this on a test. The domain of this problem is real because no matter what values I type in for x, if I add these, subtract these, or multiply these, I don't have any x's in the denominators to give me the division of zero error. But here, I do have some problems because you'll notice that there's no x's in the denominators here, but there is an x in the denominator here. Can you find where there is a possible problem? It's right here. What number would I plug in for x to give me a 0 in the denominator? Well, that would be 9, because 9 minus 9 is 0. If you can't figure it out, just take whatever denominator you have and make that you're not equal to 0. If you solve for x, like you would in a normal traditional problem, you will then get your danger number. So, the domain for this problem is x can be real, but x cannot be negative 9, or positive 9. Sorry, didn't mean to say negative. Can't really edit that out. So, there you go. All you need to do is look for danger numbers. These examples get pretty quick, because then you just focus on, for these two right here, you focus on the problems that have denominators. So, does this have a problem? Well, no, because this graph is going to work for every value of x. But this graph will not work if you plug a 0 in for x. So, therefore, your domain of this composite of these two functions, whether you're either added, subtracted, or multiplied, is going to work for every real number, unless you plug in 0. So, x cannot be equal to 0. Okay, how about here? Now, we got two danger numbers. See if you can figure out the danger numbers before I reveal it. I'm going to write down this first. Well, really, you can type in any real number except for two danger numbers. What's the danger number here? By thinking that in your head, the number that I would plug in here to give me 0 in this denominator would be positive 5. So x cannot be equal to positive 5. Also, x cannot be equal to a 0. And the reason why x cannot be equal to 0 is 0 times 3 is 0. So if I add, subtract, or multiply these functions, these would be my two danger numbers that would give me a division of 0 error. If you plug these in, you can see that the calculator will have an actual error here and an error here. OK. Our final two problems. It says, for each pair of functions, f and g, Determine the, dom dom <laughs> determine the domain of the quotient f divided by g. I should probably put down that this would be f of g and then a little x afterwards. All right, so I have 5 plus x, and I'm going to have 6 minus 2x. This is what it's going to look like when they're on top of each other. You should test only the g of x in this situation because there's no problems here. So what I'm going to do is test to take my 6 minus 2x and set that not equal to 0 and then solve for x. I'm going to move my 6 to the other side. No, 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 no. Negative 2x is equal to negative 6. Divide both sides by negative 2. x is equal to positive 3. Now I'm going to put a line through there because that's going to be my danger number. So if I plug 3 into this equation you will see that that is a danger number. 
because that will give me a 3 in this denominator when I divide my 2. So my domain of this problem tells me I can add, I can put in any real number into either of these equations, but when I divide them, I better not put in the number 3. Okay, now for this problem, you'll notice that I have a danger number right here before I even stack these equations. So therefore, my problem is this x minus 2. So my danger number is going to be positive 2, because 2 minus 2 is 0. But now you'll notice that I have this 3x plus 7. Well, if I put these functions on top of each other, which will look a little sloppy, and I could make this a lot cleaner by doing multiplying by the reciprocal. But just to keep things in track with how I've been explaining this, if I have this equation, and I'm looking for x's in the denominator, I've already covered this danger number, but now I need to cover this danger number. So this is 3x plus 7, cannot be equal to 0, and I'm going to solve for x here. I'm going to solve for x because I don't want this number in the denominator of g of x or in the number of g of x because that's going to give me the division of 0 error. So x is going to be not equal to negative 7 thirds. And so now I have two danger numbers because by plugging this into the denominator will give me division of 0 and because my g of x in this stacked problem cannot be 0, I have my second danger number. Therefore, my final answer to this problem is x such that x can be real, except that x cannot be equal to 2, and x cannot be equal to negative 7 thirds. If you have any questions, please email me, and thank you for watching.